by the combined choir.
Isaiah chapter 40, verses 30 through 31. Okay. Even Say it youth again. shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted, but they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. Mm. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. Yes. They shall run and not be weary. All right. They shall yeah. walk and not faint. Amen. Sure. We will now have prayer by Brother Gabriel Glancy. May everyone bow their heads. Lord, I just want to say thank you for waking us up this morning, Lord. Thank you for um, allowing us to be here this morning, Lord, today, Lord. I just want to, I just want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for everything you've done for us, everything you're going to do for us, Lord. Everything that you've done for us that we don't even know about, Lord, because we wouldn't be here if it for you, Lord. Yes, yes. I pray that you... Allow us to um, praise you and worship you every day, Lord. Um, take our bodies, Lord. Make them yours, Lord. A while your, allow your will be done today, Lord. Um, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for the day, Lord. Thank you for um, just for everything, Lord. Great is he that is, that is in us than he is in the world. The world, Lord, we try to live by that and stand by that, Lord. Lord, I pray that... Um, that we can just walk beside you, Lord. Walk in your love and in, and in your peace, yes, Lord. Yes, yes, um, yes. And truly embrace you, Lord. Um, allow us to bow down before you, Lord, and truly submit to you, Lord. Yes, allow yes, you, yes. your will be done, Lord. Um, um, let, um, yeah. I pray that you, I pray for the sermon, Lord, that your words be done today, Lord, and that you will preach to us today, Lord. And um, just allow the preacher to use your words for, um, for us to listen and learn whatever that we have to do, Lord. Let us all have a wonderful, blessed day, a wonderful, blessed week. And let us send your angels to protect us and guide us throughout the um, week, Lord. Um, I thank you and I praise you, Lord. In Jesus' name, pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
morning. Um, today is Youth Sunday. Let's continue to encourage and pray for the youth of, B of BTC. On Saturday, on Saturday, March 23rd, there will be an Easter egg hunt here at BTC for our youth. The time will be announced at a later date. Good Friday service will be held on Friday, March 29th at 12 noon at Christ Care Unit Missionary Baptist Church in Sickleville. Um, on March 31st, the Sunday School will present What Jesus Means to Me at 9 a.m. Please come out to support our young people. Also, Easter Sunday, the Daniel Fast will end. Attention, the 2023 giving statements are now available. Please see Trustee Darty Scott if you wish to receive a copy of your statement. Sunday school for all ages every Sunday are at are every Sunday at 8:45 a.m. The new members class meets Sundays at 8:45 a.m. Wednesday night Bible study every week at 7 p.m. Inspire Inspire conference call every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday mornings at 7 a.m. Our dial number is 425-436-6344. Access code is 293-200. Uh, the women's ministry tea is on April 20th, 2024. The theme is Fill My Cup. It's from 12 to 4, free will offering. There's free will offering. So, Gabe from AV Ministry, he just celebrated his 18th birthday. Our sick and shut in, Deaconess Deborah Brown, Sister Andrew Knight, Sister Carrie Miller, Sister Hasner Thornton, Sister Deborah Jones, Sister Brenda McDaniel, Sister Diane Robinson, and Sister Awilda Torres. Please keep Vanessa Cole in your prayers. She laid to rest her niece yesterday. And the same to all those who have lost their loved ones. And the thought of the day is the redemption by his blood has made me free. All right, praise the Lord, everybody. What a mighty God we serve. Truly, um, it's a blessing to welcome all those to the Baptist Temple experience. Those are our visitors, those here for the first time. We welcome you. We ask that you continue to pray for us as we pray for you. Um, we ask that you govern yourself accordingly to the announcements that were given. Again, Baptist Temple is so important that Bible study and, uh, and Sunday school is so important. Uh, God has blessed us with some teachers, some preachers, and we ask that you would show yourself up so that you may know what God has for you as we in corporate study. Um, again, we ask that you will pray for those who are in Daniel fasting. We know that that can be trying, but we ask that you pray for them as they're praying that God will keep them to go on as they're in their fasting. Um, Baptist Temple, remember, if you can, please, the seven last words will be on Good Friday at CCUM. Um, again, me and Reverend Jackson will be on the Dias as we begin to give the word. We ask you to support. The van is going. Deacon Barber will be driving. Those who need to get on that van, and we will give the directions so you'll know how to get there if you're driving. Um, yesterday, yesterday the men went bowling yesterday. All those that could and would. Uh, uh, Brother Gabe was the number one. Reverend Jackson showed up yesterday. And believe it or not, Deacon Barber came in third place, y'all. He cleaned it up at the last time of the last game we had, and he started throwing strikes. <laughs> like, like that was what he came there for. So it was a blessing. And the other blessing is we had Pastor Williams there. We had uh, Reverend Winston there. I know that uh, Reverend uh, Logan had to work, but his spirit was there. And then we had a visitor. <laughs> We had Reverend Sweeney come and visit us at the bowling alley, y'all. You know, it's, 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 it's a blessing. It's a blessing. Because we had the pastor emeritus. We had 
the interim pastor. We had two candidates as senior pastor. And then we had one candidate who was in prayer. You know, that's a unity, y'all. Don't think there's something going on between that. That's love. That's what God has brought us to be. So we, are, we ask, we thank you for those who pray and support us. Yes, Deacon uh, McNeil didn't show up because he did not want to be showed out. Nah, just kidding, just kidding, just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, you ain't want to get show out this time, huh? Okay, all right. <laughs> That's a man thing, y'all. That's a man thing. But uh, we, we, we thank you. We're going to ask y'all. We're going to do this again. But this time, we're going to try to see if we can get the women to come. Because we practice enough. We did practice enough. And we want to show y'all what God has for us. Um, also, we do have some visitors today that are going to praise dance. Um, just want to keep them in prayer. Uh, this is something that the youth is getting together. Baptist Temple, Baptist Temple. One of the important things that we need to remember is that we have to encourage our youth. I mean, I, I know y'all heard about the shooting they had in Philadelphia. School kids. These are not grown-up folks. These are school kids killing themselves. And we need to grab our youth today, hold them, encourage them, lift them up, always look out for them. And those that are in college, we have to remember them because they're out there and they're going to need our prayers. So we ask that you continue to keep them in prayer as we do so. Now it's time for our offering. Um, I'm sorry, we're going to do the praise dance before worship or giving. Camden Contemporary Dance Theater. Martina is coming up to introduce them. All right, good morning, members of the pulpit, Baptist Temple family and friends. I am excited to, for us to see our guest performers this morning. Very often, people think that the arts is dead in the city of Camden. However, that is not true at all. We have businesses such as Dare to Dance, Camden Repertory Theater, as well as our guest performers, Camden Dance Contemporary Theater. Yes, yes. clap it up for them, yes. So, without further ado, I would like to present to you their director, Mr. Freddie Pratt. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. My name is Freddie Pratt. I'm one of the directors for Camden Contemporary Dance Theater. The other is Mr. Kriya Hawkins. Um, so we are one of the first small contemporary African-American based companies in the city. Um, so one of our biggest missions is to start to bring the arts back into the city of Camden, which is such an amazing, amazing, this city has so much talent and we're so glad to be a part of something positive in the city. Um, so I'm here to talk to you guys a little bit about a production that the company does called The Resurrection. Um, so this is a theatrical performance that tells the life of Jesus Christ. So starting from when he was baptized by John the Baptist, following all the way through to his crucifixion, and then of course, The Resurrection. Um, so it is a production told through dance, it's with live singing, there's narration, it's a really, really powerful performance. Um, but what I love the most about it is theater kind of gives us the opportunity to minister to people who may have lost their way from the church or maybe not be comfortable to step into this kind of space. Um, so we want to make sure that we're really getting this message out to the people who may not know the Lord the way that we do. Um, so that is the mission of this show and the mission of this company, that we can reach souls for Christ in a way that may not seem traditional. Um, so if you guys are available and want to come out and see, those um, performances are this Friday and Saturday. Friday is at 6 in the evening, and then Saturday there's a 1 o'clock and a 6 o'clock as well. Um, Sister Martina should have the, um, the flyers for you guys for, like, ticket information. There's all types of discounts and deals available if you guys want to come as a group. Um, but we definitely thank you for allowing us to be here today and just show like a little snippet of the production. Um, so what we're doing today is um, when Jesus was in the desert for 40 days, when he was tempted by the devil the three times. And then after that, when he went into prayer and the angel came and gave
gave him comfort. So that's like the excerpt that we're going to do for you today. Amen. 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 to be tempted by the devil. After 40 days and nights without food, Jesus was hungry. The devil tempted Jesus to turn stones into bread, to which he replied, human beings cannot live on bread alone. We need every word God speaks. second temptation was for Jesus to pull himself from the highest point of the temple and order angels to catch him. Jesus replied, do not put the Lord your God to the test. The devil left Jesus and angels came to help him. The angel gave him strength for he is the Lord God. Shall rise to thee. 
Amen. Amen. Yes, yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, yes, yes. Baptist Temple. Baptist Temple. I, I dare to ask that we should at least uh, sponsor our youth to this play. We should sponsor. Someone should be able to let them buy them a ticket. Um, I believe, you know, we always used to go to uh, see the play in Burlington. And we would travel all the way down there. Uh, we don't have to go far no more. We can come to our own home, our own home Baptist temple, and be able to see that. And that is a blessing. That is a blessing. Thank you, Sister Martina, for uh, bringing that towards the youth. Thank you, Reverend Logan, as the youth minister, uh, being able to bring that towards the youth. We're going to be doing a lot for our youth as we begin to grow so that they'll know that we are for them and not against them. So we ask that you continue to pray for them. Now it's time for our giving. They yeah, see, we clapping, but we ain't really clapping like we should be clapping. It's time for our giving. Listen, listen, I know, I know, I know a lot of people are saying, well, why should I give? Why should I be giving to the church? You know, it's a kingdom building giving. You know, the lights you got, that you can see, somebody got to pay that. Now, I'm not asking you to pay our bills. I'm asking you as a, a member and people to help support pay the bills. Because we want you to be able to see. We want you to be able to feel good while you're in here. And we want to be over ever to open up the doors so that you can get a praise, a worship. So now we're going to turn it over to our ushers. Today is also Youth Day. Uh, can I get two youth up here? Any? And two of them? Come on up. Come on up. Uh, the two baskets on the end are for our youth. And the basket in the middle is the church. So that you'll know. Follow the directions of the youth.
Yes, God is good, right? Amen, amen. We, 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 we love that we can blend our voices together, right? We love when the choir ministers do song. We love when we hear the invocational prayer. But I am here to tell you that it is the word of God from the man of God that is going to hold you two o'clock in the morning. And we have a man of God that is going to bring forth the word of God here for us today. The word is for you. The word is for you to be able to be encouraged, right? To be able to be a vessel of God, to go out and proclaim the living word of God. We thank God for our own Reverend Mark Logan, who is going to bring forth the word. I thank and praise God as a co-laborer in Christ that as an associate of this church, that we all can co-label together in the word of God. That's such a blessing, uh, Baptist Temple. So after the soloist from Sister Kamani Carson, we will have the word of God. Listen, you need to be attentive at your tent door. You need to have your ears open. You need to have your mind open and most of all your heart because there is a word for you today that is going to come forth to bring life in a situation that may have death. So we ask that after the selection from Ms. Kamani that you will be able to hear the word of God from Reverend Mark Logan. Hear ye him. Testing, testing. Yeah. Testing, testing. Okay. Hi, how are you guys today? <laughs> My name is Kamani, and I'll be singing He Wants It All. So, we can start. There's a voice that cries out in the silence Searching for a heart that will love him And longing for a child that will give him their own Give it all, he wants it all And there's a God that walks over the earth He's searching for a heart that is desperate and longing for a child that will give him their all, give it all, he wants it all. And he says, love me, love me with your whole heart, he wants it all today. Serve me, serve me with your life now, he wants it all today. Bow down. Let go of your idols. He wants it all today. He wants it all today. He wants it all today. So give it all. And there's a God that walks over the earth. He's searching for a heart that is desperate and longing for a child that will give him their all. Give it all. He wants it all, and he says, love me, love me with your whole heart, he wants it all today, serve me, serve me with your life now, he wants it all today, bow down, let go of your idols, he wants it all today. He wants it all today, so give it all. All of you, more of you, wants it all today. All of you, more of you, wants it all today. All of you, more of you, wants it all today. 
He's searching for a heart that will love him And longing for a child that will give him their own Give it all He wants it all it all today. Amen? Not tomorrow, but today. Amen? Amen. How many glad just to be in the house of the Lord once again? Amen. I want to give honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to my pulpit colleagues, Reverend Jackson, uh, and to Pastor Scott, Savior Christ, <laughs> Mr. Schultz, and our pastor, amen. amen. To the chairman of Deacon Board, to Trustee Nelson, um, to all, good morning. I want to uh, give a thanks uh, to Brother Jenkins for that scripture that he read. Amen. <laughs> From uh, Gabe. Now, Gabe, you 18, that don't mean you grown, that just means you legal, amen? All right, all right, as long as we understand that, amen? And the veil for stepping in and being the worship leader. Amen. And for Sanaya for doing the announcements, amen? And let's not look, overlook the gentleman that's up there who serve every single Sunday, making sure that our microphones are working and making sure that we're on live stream. Amen. I don't know about you, Saints, but we have some youth up here doing some work. Amen. Amen. I have some visitors up in the house this morning that I must acknowledge. Um, Emmanuel and Carla, I thank y'all for showing up. Y'all drove a lot of miles to get here, amen? And I appreciate that, I appreciate that. Uh, appreciate you, Stefan, for being here. And some who don't know, that young lady that just sons, he wants it all, will soon be my bonus daughter, amen? I can't say soon, because she has already been, so I'm not gonna say soon, but I can say legally she will be, amen? And then to my fiance, I know she's a proud mama seeing her daughter up there singing. Amen. Amen, amen. When you get older, you got to write stuff down so you won't forget, you know what I mean? Amen. But uh, I'm sorry, I'm about to forget my first lady. Amen. I'm sorry, first lady. How are you this morning? Amen. Amen, man. But God has gave a word to give this morning. May we all stand for the reading of God's word. I'll be coming out of the book of 1 John, the fifth chapter, and I'll be reading verses 1 through 7. 1 John, the fifth chapter, verses 1 through 7, and I'll be reading out the New King James Version. God's word reads... Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone who loves him who begot also love him who is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is he who overcomes the world but he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not only by water, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit who bears witness because the Spirit is truth. And last verse. For there are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, 
and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading here of his word. This morning, I just want to talk to you briefly on the topic of what is your credit score? What is your credit score? Let's go to the throne of grace. Our Father, our God, Lord, we come before you right now in the name of Jesus, Father. We come, Lord, just thank you, Lord, for this day, Father. Lord, we know, Lord, that we didn't have to wake up this morning, Father, as we slept, Father God, but you seen fit for us to wake up, and you gave us the means to come in here into your house to lift up your holy and precious name. But, Lord, we come here, Lord, to hear a word from you, Father. Lord, so I ask, Lord, you hide this unworthy vessel behind the cross, Lord, that they may see you and not me, Father. But, Lord, I have studied and I have prepared, Father God, but can no preaching take place without your power? So, Lord, I ask, Lord, you fill this unworthy vessel up from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet, Lord, that I may speak a word, Father God, that someone may say, what must I do to be saved? So, Lord, we thank you and we love you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray with love and thanksgiving. Let the church say amen. Amen. What is your credit score? Jonah, can I have a little bit more, please? Jonah, can I have a little bit more? Thank you. What is your credit score? Saints, a credit score is a numeric expression based on analysis of a person's credit file to represent a credit worthiness of an individual. A credit score is primarily based on a credit report, information typically sourced from credit bureaus. And there are three credit bureaus. I'm sure we all know the names of those three. Equifax, TransUnion, and Experian. There are three credit bureaus giving you three different scores off of one report giving you a score based on their evaluation of your faith to pay back from what you are given. One report with three different analysis. In this walk that we walk in, we have to realize and understand that we have three watching and evaluating your walk and your faith to see if you value what you were given. And what you were given, are you willing to pay back a lease, a portion of it? Let me make this plain. You've been given everlasting life for those who believe. You have been given forgiveness of sins. You've been given life and life more abundantly. You've been given grace and you've been given mercy. You have been given, you have been blessed, and there's nothing that you have done, but you are blessed by what was done and given to you. And the loan that was given to you was a loan that truly and fully cannot be repaid. Are you with me this morning? You weren't given these things for you to keep but you were given these things to use for the building of God's kingdom, and there are three watching and taking a score to see if your faith lines up to pay back a portion of what you were given. And the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit were were to give you a score on the repayment plan for the credit that you have received, what would be your credit score? If the father said to you, I, 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 I sent my son because no one else could do it, in the midst of sending my son, I had to be separated from him. And in the midst of me sending my son, as he took on the torture and took on the pain for you, I had to turn my back because I couldn't stand to see what my child was going through. And the son is saying to you this morning that I came and I have showed you the way and I have walked the walk and I have talked the talk and I have got up on that cross and I have taken the torture that you should have took 
And I come to tell you that, do you value what I have done for you? And the Holy Spirit is saying that, that since you said that you believe in us, that I came and I live in you. But since I came and lived in you, it's, I wonder, do you believe what I tell you to do? Because when I tell you to go left, you go right. When I tell you to do right, you do wrong. So why am I living in you if you're not going to do what I tell you to do? After all of that us three do for you, don't you think that you have to give back to the one who gave his life at the expense of giving up his own? Hmm. I think y'all might have to walk me out to church this morning. Amen. <clears throat> we walk around saying that we are Christians, which means to be Christ-like but some don't resemble anything of him. No, some of us aren't Christians, but some of us are pretenders. We pretend to love the Lord. We pretend to forgive like him. We pretend to love one another. We pretend to do his will. We pretend to come in the house of the Lord and give him praise, but we don't do his will, but we come in here to do our own will. We pretend to care for one another, we pretend to serve him, but we just want to be seen by man while we are serving. We pretend to lift him up, but we, we, want to, we, we, we want to be exalted. We pretend to praise him, but we can't even lift our hands up or stand on our feet to give him some praise. Some of us are here, are pretenders, and just in case you don't know what a pretender is, the definition for you is a person who claims to aspire the title or position, which is disciple. And I come to tell you this morning that there's a lot of pretenders that came to church often that are living in hell. The Lord says, these people come near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. I don't know about you, but it's impossible for me to truly love someone and don't do anything for them. There are some people that say that they love the Lord, but don't even know him. What are you saying, preacher, that you only love what you know he can do for you? I don't know about you. I had people in my life who used me, and then I had people in my life who truly love me, and I come to tell you different. there's a difference between the two. But if you really knew him and love him, you would love him wholeheartedly for what he has already done or for the reason how you are still here. Says, if you think about the things that you used to do and how you enjoy doing it, if you think about how many times that you were high and drunk and you woke up and you didn't know where you were or who you were laying next to, if you think about how many times your finances didn't add up with what you needed to provide for your family, but somehow he made a way. If you think about how many times your health failed you, but he stepped in and saved you. Or you may be here, you say, you know what? I never did those things, preacher. And I say to you, okay, but there's times that you run around seeking validation from others and forget that you already been validated. Or you always down, feeling alone, but the light switch go off and you realize that he never left you nor forsake you. If you know him, you would serve him. He's the only one who loves your dark side just as much as he loves your sunshine. If you really knew him and loved him, you would serve him with gladness. But some of us don't do these things because we really don't have a true relationship with him. 
The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit aren't pleased what some of us are pretending to be. And we need to get back to being led by our GPS, God's positional system. When we decide to start doing his will instead of our will, and we go back to using his GPS, then the Holy Spirit is going to have to ask some of you, can I use your can I lose your location? I know about you, but sometimes when you got to get somewhere, you go on your phone, you punch in where you got to go. Sometimes the phone says, can I use your location? And the reason why he has to ask that, because where we think we are is far off from where he know we are. And now that your loan has been in collections, because you haven't made one single payment to his glory. But what I love about my God, and then when I do get back on his GPS, he will recalculate me and get me to where I need to be. And I don't know about you, that's the praise right there. And some of us need to be recalculated. We need to be recalculated because we as the, we have lost our position in him. The universal church. And we are running around in buildings just doing anything. Being disrespectful intentionally, not forgiving, not loving, not leaving these four walls to affect and affect the communities, what our statement says. We, 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 want to, we want to be a preacher, but we don't want to study to preach. We want to be on the choir, but we're really not singing. We want to be an usher, but we can't smile for nothing. We want to be a deacon, but we, we can't go and visit a sick and shut in. Some of us have lost our positions in him and gained a position with ourselves. And if the law officer comes back right now, some of us will be in trouble. The heart of our faith is that Jesus was born, baptized, crucified, and was raised three days later to empower all of us to become God's children by being cleansed by his blood. Jesus was tortured and broken for us to be made whole. And this is the faith that can overcome the world and we learn how to love him so that we can love one another. His love brings life into brokenness. And living this out is the victory by living our faith in the crucified, risen Son of God. But everyone who believes that Jesus is the Messiah has been born of God, meaning a child of God. So whoever loves their parent are supposed to love not just one of the parent's children, but all of them. So you have to say that every child of God is linked to Jesus. And every injustice done to a child of God echoes the injustice that was done to Jesus. So you keep treating your brother and you keep treating your sister with the hatred that you've been treating them. The Lord tells us in Matthew 7 and 2, for with that judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Paul is trying to teach us that those who come to faith in Christ are called as living to the Holy Spirit and no longer according to the flesh. Saints, we have no obligation to the flesh, but to the spirit only. And we have to understand that it's a privilege to live in Christian living. By having the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit in one's life and to have all that we have knowing is from the Lord. But sometimes I think that we forget that everything that we have comes from the Lord. Our house comes from him. Our cars come from him. Our children come from him. You come from him. So everything that we have comes from the Lord. 
Paul talking about two lifestyles, one who are living according to the flesh and one are living according to the spirit. And I need to ask yourself this morning, which one are you living by? If you are living by the flesh, then you are on a highway to hell. But if you are living by the spirit, then it's time to repay a portion of our debt and get our credit scores up. Saints, there was a price that was paid for us, and we owe an obligation to the one who paid the price. An obligation is an act or a course of action to which a person is morally or legally bound to do a commitment. We should be committed to this walk. We should be accountable to do his will. We should have a responsibility to live and serve the one who died for us, and we should be an assignment daily to live a life that others will want to know about the God that we serve. And here in verse 12 and 13 argues that there is an obligation that we live daily in the power of the Holy Spirit. And if we are living in it daily, then we must do what Luke 9 and 23 says. If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. If you read that, it says, deny himself daily. That means it has to be a repetition. That means every single day you got to struggle. You got to fight with whatever you're going through. The more and more that you practice, the more and more you do it, the better you get. Jonah, you wasn't you a great pitcher, but you wasn't like that when you started, amen? But you had to practice, and you had to practice to get to where you are. And when you practice and practice, you get better every day. It's a repetition that we have to do. How do I deny myself daily? I'm glad you asked. First, by surrendering fully to the Lord. By daily imitating Jesus, by sacrificing for others, by loving on one another and spending quality time with God in prayer and reading his word. And that's just a start. My mom was dying. Paul is urging us to have obedience by faith. Saints, Jesus is coming back. And if you read his word, you know that we're not far off. And, when, and we have a debt to pay, and that is to live for him. I couldn't imagine seeing him in all his glory, closing my eyes and opening them up, and he's right there in front of me. And he isn't pleased with me. Could you imagine his first words is to you is that you robbed me? I lended you finances. I lended you your house, I lended you your car, I lended you your children, your life I sustained, and you didn't give me back a gift or a talent, you didn't serve me with love, you didn't love on my children, you told people that you knew me, but who are you? Your spirit don't look like mine's. And your aroma don't smell like me. Go be with the one that you served. Joshua says in 24 and 15, choose yourself this day whom you will serve. Saints, time is running out. He will be here soon. And once he comes, you can't ask for another chance. Today is another day to get it right. What are you going to do with it? Amen. I had to preach that to myself about 10 times. What are you doing for me? Is this a one-way relationship? Or do you value what I have already done for you? Or are you sitting back doing nothing for me, waiting to see what else I'm going to do for you? 
But saints, time is running out. He's coming back. He's coming back soon. And I don't want him to be angry with me when he comes back. But I would love to hear the words, well done, my good and faithful servant. Welcome into the house of the Lord. There may be one here today who don't know this Jesus. There was a time when I didn't know him. And as I look back over my life when I didn't know him, I was a messed up individual. I didn't know if I was coming. I didn't know if I was going. I ran after everything. Nothing I got fulfilled me. But when I met this Jesus, he has made me whole. And I'm, not, I'm still not perfect. I still mess up all the time. But he covers my mess up because he knows my heart. If he did it for me, he can do it for you. Is there one here today who do not know this Jesus that says, I'm tired of doing things on my own, that I need a savior that I can lean on, that I need a savior that I can call on. Is there one? Is there one? He says, I want you right now just the way you are. He doesn't care about what you did last night. He doesn't care about what you did this morning. But he said, I am here waiting for you just to wrap my arms around you. Is there one? Or you may be here this morning, you don't have a church home. We offer you Baptist Temple Church. We're not a perfect church, but we strive for perfection. Is there one? Is there one? Amen. At this time, we'll have family prayer. Amen. We have family prayer at this time. to me. Speak to me through my anger, Lord. Speak to me. Speak to me through my dislike, Lord. Speak to me. Speak to those who don't treat me well, Lord. Speak to me. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you first, asking that you forgive us for our sins we have committed. Then, Lord, we stand before you as humble as we know how. You said in the word, Lord, that if we don't forgive those who trespass against us, then you're not going to forgive us for our sins. So right now, Lord, we, we ask that you will help us to forgive those. Strengthen us so we can be strong. Lord, we stand before you right now. Standing, holding hands, Lord, and there's so much we want to say to you right now, Lord. Redirect our loves back to you, Lord. Redirect our love and strength back to you, Lord. We heard a word, Lord. A word that stepped on our toes, Lord. A word that rejuvenated us back to knowing that our hands should be pointing up to you. There are some that are standing before us 
and financial need, Lord. Some standing before us and their marriage is going astray. Some are standing for that wayward child, Lord. Some are standing because of their health, Lord. Doctor said something and they're just not feeling good, but they're making it on their own. Some are lonely, Lord. Compassion. Some are just coming to praise your name because you are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! But we come before you because you said, give it to me, I'll bear it. Give it to me, I'll share it. If there's a need in your life, take it to the Lord in prayer. So we, we thank you, Lord. We stand in anticipation of the victory that you are giving us, Lord. We stand with the victory of our marriage. We stand in the victory of our health. We stand in the victory of our finance. We stand in the victory of our illness. We stand in the victory of our children. Hallelujah, you're worthy. Stand in the victory of our loneliness, knowing that you, God, and only you, we thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for the word. We thank you for your love. Had you not shown yourself, we wouldn't have known. So we thank you, Lord. We give you all honor. We give you all glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
can take are worthy of messed up individual like me and hand me teach and preach his word. He's a mighty God, amen. A mighty God. Amen. Before I close out, I just want to um oh, today just been a blessed day. Um yes. for seeing how this youth has are growing, loving on one another. I went upstairs and I asked Jonah and Gabe, I said, Sorry, right, Jeremiah, come up. They was like, Of course, tell them to come up here. And he's up there, you know, just mingling along with them. Amen. Our youth is just growing, saints. They are growing. Nevaeh wasn't supposed to be the worship leader, but she said, I got this, and stepped up and did it. Amen. And she had it, too. Amen, amen. And Gabe, I don't know where you learned how to pray like that, brother, but you keep, keep on going, Gabe. Keep on going, you know? Before I close, I just want to just um, say something to one person. Um, Kamani. <laughs> The way that you have taken me in as a father figure, at your age already being grown, loving on me, looking at me for leadership, and then to count out robbery, to come in here and to sing for the Lord, I just want to say thank Amen. you. Amen. As we all sing. Next Sunday. Next Sunday. <laughs> Sing, Pastor. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, Lord, we are so grateful, Father. We're grateful, Lord, for the spirit that you sent in this church today, Father. Lord, we are grateful, Lord, for the praise dancers. We ask, Lord, that you touch them, Father God, as they go out, Father God, and lift up the name of Jesus, Father. Lord, help us also, Lord, to go out these doors, Father God, and live up to our, 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 our mission statement, Father God, that we go out to these communities, Lord, because, Lord, these communities are struggling, but we have what they need. So we ask, Lord, you help us to go out there and just show the love of you, Father God. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for every ministry here. We thank for everyone who came here today, Father God, to, to this fellowship with you, oh, Lord. Lord, we're grateful and honored because we know, Lord, if it wasn't for you, where would we be? But never to leave your presence, but we are leaving this place, Father. We ask that you go with us and be with us in everything we say and do, Father. And we pray, Lord, that everything we say and do will be pleasing to your sight, Father. We thank you and we love you. And let the church say, Amen.